it's amazing how many guys story or journey was kind of sparked or kerosene was poured on it from just uh, as some adult or some supportive figure saying like yo i see you and you can do this like i don't think i ever told a story like i remember even getting confidence from even myself like uh hearing my hearing my dad talk to his friend about me on the phone around the corner after always getting you know chest so i was like oh he thinks i'm actually good and then one time I heard him argue with one of my coaches, I was probably in the seventh or eighth grade, and he like blew up on a coach. Like, you didn't want to give him the ball, da da da. You know, typically a player, I'm like, oh, he's yelling at the coach. Oh, he must really think I'm nice. Oh, I must be nice. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me take <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. He think I'm nice. You know what I mean? Hey, yo, listening to this, man. <laughs> hey, hold on, hold on, man. He's like, <laughs> But that's, it's empowering, man. My man Jordan Norwood, the same thing happened to him. And it's just that My one God, person that kind of sees something in somebody. And it goes a long way because it like kind of, you know, it shoots yeah. your career to the point where you have that perseverance to go through different things um, yeah. going through it. So you had an uh, <clears throat> unconventional journey to the NFL. Can you tell me a little bit so, about that? So, yeah, man. Made? So, so again, you know, um, I played I played wide receiver my entire time there, man. Um, you know, up and down just in terms of consistency and, and you know, performance. Um, but at the end of the day, really about my regular sophomore, junior year, I I just come in, I'm like, look, I'm gonna contribute on this team one way or another. I'm too athletic not to be a contributor, too athletic for you not to be having, you know, if you're gonna have me in and out of the lineup over here on offense, okay, bet. I'm gonna be on special teams, hitting somebody, making tackles and blocking punts, you know, um, and I'm gonna be on the field. I'm gonna get my tape <laughs> that I need, right? And so uh, I became that guy. I became a utility guy, I like to think. And then it got to a point where on scout teams, you know, I, I was an all-state DN coming out of high school, so it wasn't foreign to me, but, you know, for the coaches, it was like, hold on a second. Who's this on scout team beating our left tackle like a drum, right? Like, oh, wait, wait, okay, wait. Now they're starting to have conversations behind the doors, right? And so um, one day I got the nerve to, to put on a defensive jersey and go to practice. And uh, D-line coach is like, hey, what's up, JK? I'm like, man, I'm with you now. He said, the head coach know about this? I said, no, sir. You talked to the coordinator about this? I said, I don't think we've spoken about two weeks. <laughs> I said, I <laughs> uh, trying to get you, baby. I'm man, he said, here. look, he walked over to the head coach, came back and said, Okay, that next week I was starting nickel and dime passes, pack pass rush, coming off the edge, man. Hey. <laughs> and that was and that and that was it. And 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 you know, actually it wasn't until about three months ago, not even, maybe two, I just had a conversation with this D line coach. Uh we just happened to catch up and he told me some stuff that I didn't know. Um, about they were trying to register me and keep me another year and they thought, you know, I was sort I would have had double digits all this stuff. You know, but I end? say all that at the end, like they were trying, they were trying to plot this whole plan. One of those guys is the, is the assistant head coach, D coordinator at University of Minnesota now. Okay, and you know, so again, to your point of somebody edifying you um, and speaking into you, and he believed in me in that moment. You know, he he didn't add, he didn't say, "Hey, do I think you can do this?" He knew it. So he got a shiny new toy, and you know, and he would and he would he was telling me those things, man. Jk, okay, we gonna make you gonna do this. You are gonna be all right. And so fast forward, you know, I work out, I do my pro day, one scout, New England Patriots, took that drive up 95 north of Maine in the middle of February, you know, it's 530 in our, in our AM, we're getting warmed up in our dome with no heat, you know, at the University of Maine, it's cold, it's dark. That's why we call it the land of the misfits up there, man. If you make it out of there, you, 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 you got something a little extra. You got some juice. <laughs> and so again, one scout, but I love that because I was like, all I need is one. All I need is one guy to see me do what I can do. And so, um, you know, after that pro day, I blew it out the water, uh, really went well for me. Um, had I been to the combine that year, I would have been top five in a lot of categories, uh, I think, if, if I recall correctly. And ended up getting 13, 14 calls from NFL clubs after those numbers came out, uh, which went great. Uh, but then the NFL lockout hits. Ah, uh, that year. So it got interesting in 2011, right? So all that buzz kind of fizzled. Um, you know, now during this time, also I worked out for a CFL team who offered me a contract on the spot. Uh, I put it. I put it to the side because again, the NFL was. You know, some of this interest was coming, and obviously that's everybody's dream. But uh, you know, long and short of it, it all worked out. 
that later that that summer, July of 2011, that CFL team called back and said, hey, we're still interested in you, are you available? And that was the beginning of my professional career. So started up in Hamilton with the Hamilton Tiger Cats in 2011. <clears throat> and then um, after a coaching change, ended up going to the Arena League, playing in the AFL, which eventually uh, was the launch pad for me getting to work out with the Indianapolis coach. And that's kind of started my NFL tour as a journeyman there. And uh, so that was, uh, I went the long road to say the least, man. But long, slow means, grind, slow grind is the best grind. That's yeah, what, that's what yeah. I'm learning, man. I think there's yeah. a lot of jewels along that trail. If you can kind of hone them in and understand what lessons are coming along the way and not get too stressed out about not being where you want to be or the end of the destination and yeah. enjoy the journey. I think you're right. You gotta, I think there's a lot of a lot of advantages to the slow to grind. It, man. <laughs> there is a lot to it. And you know what? You learn you learn so much along the way about becoming a confident player, what it is to be a pro. Um, you see what to do, what not to do. I mean, my first year up in Canada, I saw some things that I'm like, oh, this is the pro. Oh, this is the pros for real. Uh, you know, first, I'll never forget it. My first practice, right? They called me on a a Friday, like, hey, JK, when can you be here? I'm like, I'll drive up right now. Like, oh, you know, come come on Monday. We're good through the weekend. We're going to wait. Calm down, time. young fella. Right, calm exactly. Down. Right, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm an hour away from Hamilton. Uh, oh, so, yeah, I'm, so, I'm like, I'm getting to work, dog. I'm, I'm man, talking, man, bro. I'm trying to get after it. Let me get yeah. the playbook right now. I talk, you know, uh, I show up to practice, and there was a player that was the man. He was known talent in CFL. He was the guy. And, uh, I come in and, you know, this cat kind of took me up under his wing that first day. He kind of like, hey, man, where you from? This and that, shooting the stuff, trying to figure out who I am, what I'm about, what I've done. And I'm, you know, he's kicking game to me. Hey, look, this kind of way our offense runs. That's what we do. We walk back in the locker room. That brother's locker is cleared out, traded. <laughs> reality <laughs> said, of the, of the bruh, professional sports, I said, sports, this is the pros. This is the pros. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> I had a funny Couldn't story with that too, man. You'd be working out, had like an off season workout. And you know, they bring in, you know, you see it now, you're working out and you bring a guy in. You're probably the guy they brought in. And you'll see him working out. And we were finishing up a workout and dude was making fun of him. Like, ah, look at this dude. Look how it was. He was like one of the guys. <laughs> Lo and behold, the guy that was working out took his spot. It was like, damn, he had the last laugh. I mean, you got to stay on your toes in professional sports, man. Best advice I got was like the day you get comfortable is the day you out of there. The day you get comfortable is the day you get cut. The day you get comfortable. See, yeah. you know, it was just different. You you start to understand that this is a business. You start to understand that um, it is there's there's politics associated with it. You start to understand that um, there's there's money associated with it. Um, you know, I see guys that big name players high on payroll, get injured, miss a few weeks, some young guys start to step up, that guy comes back, oh, by the way, we're going to have you playing over here to Z this week. Wait, what? Oh, they didn't tell you? Man, it's throwing binders, cussing coaches out. You're like, you don't see that in college. Next thing you know, that brother that brother who is a, is a playmaker for you is, is gone. Like, nobody's safe. Anybody can get it at any time, right? And so, you know, you start to understand what it truly means to be a professional. Um, what it truly means to be a professional. Not just be the man, but to be a professional. Uh, and I would say, honestly, in, in all of my journeys, um, I would say that's actually one thing that I still hold on to this day that, that, that I'm thankful for. Chuck Pagano looked me in my eye the day I got cut from the Colts. And, uh, and shout out to Chucky P, no doubt. And... He said to me, he said, Jeremy Kelly, you deserve to be in this league. You're you're a true professional. He said, the way you go about your business is professional. And I, I don't think you'll be on the streets long, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But um, that to me was a, was a compliment that I hold on to for, for the rest of my life. I, that means, I, you know, I came in and went about my business the right way. You know, let the cards fall where they may, um, you know, and, and that was that. So uh, I think when it comes down to it, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. I think you hit it on the head when you said professionalism. That's something that I, I pride myself in. And, and I think it's a metric that guys get evaluated on that they don't know how important it is once you enter like the college ranks, whether you're being evaluated as a recruit, whether you're being evaluated in the NFL. But that level of professionalism is something that I 
probably took a little for granted at Penn State and didn't realize until I got to the NFL and made, I was like, oh, I just got to act like I'm in at Penn State. And then I have like a upper, I had an upper hand because we had a new coach, Steve Spagnoli was coming in after my first year, the coach got fired. So no, so no coaches, new coaches come in, laying down all the rules. Like, I oh, can't, no food in the meeting room, no that, no that. And so we had, I mean, we couldn't have facial hair. We couldn't have long, we, we couldn't do anything, but it was a level of that self, that sacrifice to be amongst the team, right? Right. But and I think it's a back, synonymous with, at the college level, I think professionalism is synonymous with character, which is a word you hear a lot in the collegiate recruiting, you know, in that time. They talk to your teachers. They talk to all that, right? So, so to me, that's what it, I think it kind of it, – it, it can. It, it, it could can. equate to. It can a little bit. I, I would, I'll push back a little bit on the character piece because that's a hot button for me, like just in the recruiting space when, like, character is brought up about a player. I would hope that it would be – you would think that it's just strictly professionalism when people refer to character. But when you start asking that follow-up question of like, how do you define character? And then the questions or the answers are all over the board, or you get an answer where it's just an example of something that you saw a lot of kids doing when you were a kid or different things of that nature. Then that bad character stamp gets placed on there. That's what I have a problem with. I do agree with you. I think it's pretty simple to say, all right, when we talk about character, we're talking about how, uh, how attentive he is, how on point he right. is, how it was, does it matter? Does he, As it relates to the game, are you, are you prompt? Yeah, all are those you things, prompt right? those things, yeah. but like right. that's not how it's used in the in the different circles in personnel, even in recruiting. Because I think that's why I took so much from Penn State. Where when like when I was there, it was just like we weren't preached like, oh, we're doing this to be professionalism. Like we're doing this to be professional, but it was like giving us you know the medicine and the candy to an extent of this is what you're going to take away from here. Even if you don't take anything like our baseline was a level of professionalism. I just didn't know that that was quote unquote That's professionalism right. until you got That's into how it the was real packaged. world. It was, it was, it was, it was in a was... different package. Like once you fired yeah, and got through it, I was right. like, Oh, I this makes now. sense. Right. Like, <laughs> but you see like the outcome of it. I think there's certain schools that really do a good job with that. Cause like the point that you're talking about, man, you see, you won't we'll get into it now. I'm talking about with just your time as a, a director of um, alumni relations with the Buffalo Bills because you're seeing guys coming from all different universities, how well they're coming in from a professional standpoint, how well they're equipped to deal with things off the field. And I was not surprised, but you, I, I could tell guys that went to Penn State, like how how they looked, guys that went to Michigan, there was a certain way that they operated, guys that went to Ohio State, there was a certain way they operated. And I'm not, not just naming Big Ten schools, but there were some schools like – I was like, wow, like you guys didn't learn about this. Like you guys didn't have to do this. And I'm like, oh, they were kind of doing you dirty. That kind of drew me wanting to work back into college football. Uh, as a, and it's a great point, man. It really is because that's when actually something that stuck out to me when I got to the to the professional level, um, coming from the University of Maine. And, and I had heard a, a coach say this one time. like, hey, I like double A guys better. They listen. And double A, say that one more time. He liked double A players better because they listened. And so, and so, you're touching, you're you know, some stuff now, right. dog. That's so, so, so <laughs> you know, right. So, so to the point of, as you speak about what Penn State did for you, I can speak to how main, you know, you know, while the performance side of things may have been up and down for me, there was one thing that we, we left there being, you know, prepare for life. Right. And you think about all the little cliche sayings and, and, and the themes that your coach instills for this week to week basis, or if it's just program staples, you know, prepare, present, perform, you know, different things that you you think about from you know if you're early you're late if you're earlier on time right like all these different things that that you now carry over that are transferable skills that go with you into into life after football um you know so as you as you speak about these schools and programs that you think mid -led, misled players or or it didn't do them justice i'll never forget getting to the pro level and then realizing how much how much guys didn't know about football didn't know about reading coverages, didn't know about blocking schemes or being cued into the keys. And like that, we got coached great at the AA level because they had the time to do so. And it wasn't just about going to get the next five star prospect. You know, so that's one thing I'm very thankful for. So shout out to the University of Maine for that, man. We had a, we had a great program as far as that goes. But, um, but, but yeah, now as you, as you talk about in the professional level, um, it is something that, you know, Again, dealing with guys that are from, you know, 
in their 70s, you know, I, there's 1,400 former Buffalo Bills, essentially. Obviously, don't deal with all of them on a regular basis. Have a database close to probably 800 now um, and probably deal with, you know, any given day, I could be talking to any, anywhere from 15 to 30 guys in a day. I mean, really, truly, I try to, like, it, it, could, it could be now, and there might be some weeks where it's a lot less than that, but it just depends, um, time of year, time of season. But dealing with guys that are from, you know, Freshly out within a year or two, you know, take a guy like Steven Hauschka, who had a long, great career, um, who just walked away. We were his last team that he was with, you know, and making sure we can help him transition, you know, escort him to different events and Super Bowls, whatever it might be, and the things that are available to former players. Or it can be a guy that's been away from the game for a handful of years, seven, eight, nine years, and now is just realizing, wait, wait a second, there's all these benefits under the NFL Legends community and the NFL Former Players Association that I have access to. Well, let's talk about that. Tell me about that, JK. I'm in the process of getting my CFA or CPA, you know, as a financial advisor. Um, how do I become an agent? What do I need to go through? What's that process look like? So the, the, the sphere of resources is, it can be overwhelming. Um, but shame on the guys that choose not to take care of it. You know, we I, I say it's like, and Troy Vincent, I steal this from Troy Vincent, we can't make the man whole. Our resources are here for you, and which really equates to like, you can lead a horse to water, right? Like we have this here, but you got to open up the door and say, hey, I want to use it. Um, and so, um, Man, you just, yeah. just something jumped up, like writing that down, like you can't make the man whole. And I think that is, that, that's, a, that, that, that's a very critical because a lot of times, I think people use the game to make them whole, right? And like the things that they expect to get back from the game, whether it's a level of confidence, monetary value, or different things, it's like, oh, we're supposed to teach you these different aspects of financial management or how to deal with your family dynamics or different levels of trauma and having a support there. But a lot of the like the services that you guys do provide or the NFL provides, I mean, just seeing the whole ecosystem from the standpoint that I have, it's reactionary because by the time that I left the NFL at 26 or whatever, I was, there's certain areas of my life where I was still the 17 year old kid. Once I got that scholarship offer, because mm -hmm. at that point, there's certain things I just didn't have to figure out because in college, it was I, done I for had you. money league. I got, I it's just certain things I just need to hit right. in my life can be great. And then we see it when it kind of ends, <clears throat> there's support there, but the things that even led me to going back and using the services, there was a level of like me having to dig in and be like, okay, what do we need to do here? And like, and I remember hitting, I don't say rock bottom, but getting to the point like, all right, back to the basics, back to what did I did at Penn State. What would we do? Oh, get, get my master's. Oh, oh, do that. Oh, oh, now look here. Okay. Call this person. Oh, go to F life. Oh, get a scholarship to go to Miami and get your, what's it called? But there was a time where I was, I missed all of it psh, hit. And it was like, all right, get back to the stuff. And I was able to figure out based on what I had in college to figure out how to use all those different things. And I know there was a lot of players that I played with that didn't have that or didn't even have the confidence. Or not even the mind to do it. I mean, the mind or just, yeah, the mind or even the confidence. Because that's what I'm saying. Like, by the time you get there in high school, like, a lot of the development, there's some critical development pieces that stop being developed. If I just the, be honest, the, the habits, no, a hundred percent. And when you, as we talk about this recruitment process and, and, and how it establishes expectations, habits, and accountability, you know, the acronym rise, right? From the age of, you know, especially if you, you know, a guy like yourself, who was a, a top recruit goes to a, a power five school, you're recruited, you're insulated from all the things that, you know, could, could possibly deter you. You're supported and empowered in this space. And you have everything we need from the subway sandwich that's sitting on your chartered flight when we travel into the away game to your hotel car with your name on it when you check into the hotel. You have never checked a bag, might have never been on a flight by yourself, and you're 20 years old now, 21 years old, and you've never done these things on your own because it's always been done for you. So now, fast forward, you have the opportunity to go to the NFL, which you know, again, now things are done for you at another level. So now if you don't have that mind or foresight to operate and say, hey, OK, I'm not a college kid anymore. You know, um, yeah, I know how to pay my rent. I can do that. But you keep your responsibilities low. Maybe you don't have a family or whatnot. 
Yeah, your mind is not going to like, okay, let me get my master's degree while I, they cover it. Let me make sure that, you know, my pension and 401k and all these different things are in place. You're just kind of going along playing ball, having fun with the money in your pocket. That's why it's important. You cannot wait. I tell kids all the time that when we're talking about the, the, the recruitment phase um, or even in college, you make your money now. If you want to play part, the, the college, part if you wanna, NIL. man, if you want to play college football, and you want to be successful, you put into working in high school. If you want to play pro football and you want to make a lot of money, you put into working and you're earning that money in college. That's when you're getting that. I mean, you going you got to perform when you get there, but really the work to get the opportunity is being done. I mean, that's how you need to approach the game when you're in the four years at your university, your school, wherever you're at, because that's where the habits are created. That's where that's where those things are formed. That foundation is laid where, okay, now when you get here, now you can build off of that because you have the resources to do it and, and the access to do it. You know, you, you once you get in the pros, you know, it's like a whole nother level of access that you, in college you just didn't even know existed. And you got a team of people that are willing to, to support you in that. And it's like how to use that support. And I mean, you're, I mean, it's a promo for Blue Chip Academy because that's why we're here to empower the next generation to understand what's going on and have an acceleration like plan that. before you get to school. Like, no, like, oh, maybe I want to be a chief marketing officer. Maybe I want to be a director of alumni relations like uh, Jeremy Kelly on, on the Blue Chip Academy. What do I need to do to do that? And then at that point, now you're going to college with like a focus of like, okay, this is my path. Now I can use all the resources that I have at this school that's that I'm choosing between 15 schools. Now when I'm in the NFL, I'm going to move a certain type of way because I know that the director of player engagement is going, I might have to ask him for a job. So I'm not going to be coming up in here drunk on this. So but like, perfect. Like having that awareness, I think early, that's what I mean. My, my theory is that it starts in high school from someone that recruited guys yeah. in high school. It's hard. It's hard to stay focused. Now you see guys, now we see guys going on recruiting visits and taking pictures at Lamborghinis. So like, what exactly are we telling you the value of, of why you're coming to school? So it's hard for a kid to stay level headed and build all these things that grown men that I see don't have. But that's why we're talking now for a bunch of academy for these guys that are getting in so they can know <laughs> right. about the next chess moves that are coming up because then right. a lot of things are being evaluated on. Like the stuff that we're talking about, like you work at an NFL office. So you're saying like, okay, character, character means professionalism, this, 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 and this. So listen, like he works in an NFL office. So when they're talking about character and professionalism, they're weighing that on how they view you as a player. <laughs> like it's so like guys need to understand that. So if I'm in high school, it's not just talk. It's not just, oh, we need to get a 3.0 to stay on the field. Like that's, that's, I mean, I don't even talk about grade point averages and stuff like that, because I mean, like if you ain't playing or you don't want anything out of the game, I mean, you probably don't want to talk to me. <laughs> like, right. like I'm probably, yeah. the, I'm probably the last <laughs> one. Like, but Man. yeah, I, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just jumping on to that a little bit. Cause yeah. Cause I just want to dive into a little bit more just about the alumni relations aspect. Cause like, what, what are some of the constants that you see from successful guys going through the whole cycle? I think actually what we just spoke about, honestly, when I, if, 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 if I can consider the, if I consider the guys that are uber successful now in their transition, um, and they're honestly the, you know, the guys that not all of them are hall of fame level, uh, all pro level. Um, they're guys that maybe had five year stints, uh, even even longer, but um, and some shorter. But those are the, the guys that I think about, and I'm, I'm just kind of spinning my wheels here. Those guys took advantage and started it while they were playing. The guys that are uber successful now got into business. Um, they 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 created their intention while they were playing. They started building that while they were, they didn't wait. So there there was. You know, and then when they got out and they transitioned, I think, you know, obviously other things, other opportunities started to come along, but they were already in motion. And um, I think that's a that's a big thing, right, is, is taking that action and leveraging, the, like they say, you're most valuable while you have a job. And so you, you don't want to wait till you, till you get fired to start looking. You know, <laughs> you ain't now, now you now you out on the street. Now I see you as everybody else. Right. As opposed to somebody that's bringing a value from another company and somebody else has a value for you at, as, as your employer. OK, well, now, hey, let's have this conversation. Right. So um, I think it's about it's about activity. It's about action. It's about initiative um, and leveraging that, because while you're uh, athlete at Penn State, guess what? 
a lot of doors, a lot of doors gonna open for you. Uh, while you're a former Buffalo Bill, or, or you say, hey, I'm sorry, why? You know, as a former player, as an NFL player, doors are still going to be open. But you say, you know, we call down to, you know, I'll just use New Era because the headquarters are here in Buffalo, New York. You know, you say, hey, <clears throat> you know, I'm a linebacker on the team, man. I just want to come in and do an internship, wondering if you guys might be. Yeah, it's a hell of a lot more likely that they're going to open that door for you while you're on the club, you know, as opposed to being a former guy, mm-hmm. right? There's, there's still some value there, but while you're on the team, you need to leverage that time and leverage that access uh, while you have it. And, and that you're, man, you're so right. And it's just so guys know it's, it's a lot of, sometimes a lot of conferences segmented, right? Where like guys that are playing in the league are confident in playing the game and just having the ability and efficacy in yourself to grow that confidence outside of the game. Because there is something to put yourself out there and say, hey, I want to work at a new era. And when I'm used to backpelling all day like there's a level of confidence to put yourself out there to doing that like even the different jobs that you had that outside of football where it's like you're putting yourself out there to get that because everything that you're speaking on the resources and reaching out and it takes initiative and putting yourself out there and having confidence to be to like learn something that you don't know or even may even look stupid in certain situations while you're learning think, something new because yeah you're, yeah, you're focusing on like your game 100%. like guys need to know that that's going to happen like yo you're going to feel stupid know that like yo these right. gassers like this run test is going to be hard like you right. you're used to knowing that something's right. going to be a certain type right. of way but it's like when you sometimes when it's like just all these resources they're at your beck and call i know even me i sometimes i was feeling insecure during my transition was like man we got all this stuff and i don't know what to do and so i like again it was like that focus was like all right what do i need all right duh step one step two but like a lot of guys that i've seen don't get a chance i think to have that you bring up a great two. point there's there's a lot of dynamics there's a lot of dynamics um there one of which is what you said right stepping in is no different than me saying hey i don't want to go to the speed training because i can't a skip like the rest of these cats right eventually you figure it out Right. Well, the focus um, changed, right? You said your focus yeah, changed to like, I'm going to get exactly. that, like your mindset. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you, so as, a, as an athlete too, I think, I think there's that, there's the insecurity of that, but then there's also the insecurity of, uh, of not spending enough time on your game, right? And that changes from building to building throughout the NFL. Some coaches value player engagement. Some coaches value, um, uh, you know, you developing as a man first, player second, right? So if you're taking some time to do this X, Y, and Z in the off season, you know, well, are you focusing on again? Does he love football? You know, I, I, so, the, the Myron yeah. Roll deal, right? The My, Myron Roll, right? Like you talk about so a cat real. that if somebody would have came to him and been like, "Hey, uh, you know, we think you spend a little too much on this neuroscience thing, man." Like, you know, does that deter him? No, he said that he, we, they knew that from the get go. Hey, this cat right here can get it done. He he can get it done on both ends of the stick. We are gonna to, let him do what he wants to do. You but know? to that theory, to what I'm saying. My, I, me and Myron went to the same camps in high school and in 10th grade, he said he wanted to be a neurosurgeon. So like what I'm like, all I'm saying is in 10th grade, he had to figure it out of, Hey, I'm going, I'm going to be a neurosurgeon there. Cause like, you don't figure out that you want to be a neurosurgeon at Florida state. Like, right. that's yeah. Not, yeah. But you, it, you, it, you went there with intention. But everything, everything through this whole process is about intention. But the thing that gets me messed up is that we enter it off of emotion. Cause it's like the love and it's like, but it has to shift to like business decisions and has to shift to business decisions early. And there's like implications on the decision that you make when you're 16, 17 years old, depending on what school you go. Like you see it, like I see yeah. it, you know what I mean? And it's- I, I say this now, Jay, I say, and I, if I look back at it, there's one thing, and I don't know that it would have changed my decision or whatnot, but when I think about it, when I think about it now, when I was thinking about during my transition, I might have chose a school differently if I would have considered alumni network as a high school kid. I might have went to Holy Cross. I might have went to 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 uh, to a, Ivy. Um, an Ivy school, Brown University. I might have. I, I don't. I don't know that you know. I had those those opportunities, but I'm not thinking about. Hey, man, my alumni network is going to be. You know, I mean, University of Maine. People are pretty. as a pretty close knit group. Now, we got some guys. You know, what I'm saying we definitely. Assistant GM here with the Buffalo Bills, Brian Gain, BG, my guy, yeah. you main, you main Black Bear. We got coaches throughout the NFL. We got some people in other spaces, you know, people that work at Nike and stuff. But as far it ain't Penn State. There's a difference, right? There's again, there's levels, right? And it's 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 forty thousand undergrad versus eleven thousand undergrad, right? 
I might have chose differently, but again, there's only so much. There's, there's a lot in the book of I don't know. And as a 17 year old kid with coaches showing up saying, "Hey, I'm offering you to come play football here for free, son." You look at mom and say, "Your son, you you ain't got to pay for college." You, you think about the jersey. You think about getting the new turf field. You thinking about the the gear you finna get. You know the weight program. You ain't, you're not thinking about those other things. So you only know what you know. Um, and that's where it's important that to try to surround yourself with the people that have your best interest, uh, not just coaches, but 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 you know, if you can have that foresight, I mean, it's it, it, it's priceless, man. It, it really is. It's priceless. Um, but that's tough. To, that's tough to navigate, especially as a young kid. Let alone it's tough to navigate as a pro. It's it's tough to I, that's what I'm pro. saying. It gets harder and harder, and it's like. It, when you're in ninth, tenth grade, I mean, like you said, it, we talk about having a. I talk a lot about having a family asset, or just you see like the support groups that can pull guys down or pull them up, girls or gals down or pull them up based on information that they're feeding them, the type of pressure that they're putting on them to get a scholarship offer. Where's the motivating factors of why they want to play the sport? Is it something that that's my family does? Am I trying to? I'm trying to get my my my, my family out. Like, like, like I, I, I have a hard time. close because he don't want to drive. You know, four hours. He want to be able to come to games, but the best school might be down in you know Florida. You know, what I'm it saying? might be it, like it, camp it, circuit. Like to go to right. camp. Like it's hard to get to Penn State. So we do a lot of kids yeah. that it, it was hard for them to get there. I mean, these schools are in the middle of nowhere, right? Like I think if their kid is eating free lunch, like they shouldn't have to go to. They shouldn't have to pay to go to a state, a state ran uh, college camp. Yeah. Now you just should. And now, yeah. now you, now, now, it's, now you get. Now you, that's a whole other bag of worms. Right there. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm getting yeah, a little yeah. deep. I sometimes try to keep. I keep it. I won't go down all that hole. All that, down that rabbit funny, hole. Funny, but, but, I, but your point is is valid, man. Right. No, bro. But no, that's. I, mean, I appreciate that. So your favorite. So you said a little. We got a little bit off of there, but yeah. Your favorite teammate throughout your career, man. We can finish this up in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I hope I gave you enough about the job, man. But I'm glad that. No, you, you did. But, it was like really is is. Well, what's um, the next step in the job? Like, where you want to go next? <clears throat> I mean, for me, when I think about this space, um, and people ask this question, right? Um, and I and I often say, like, I've never been one to get caught up in titles. Um, while you know, authority and 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 um, um, again, more access comes with that. I think at the end of the day, I'm going to position myself to be in a space where as long as I have impact, I want to leave the game better than I found it. That's my agenda. That's uh, when I look back on my career, when I look back at the path it took, when I look back at how, you know, this gig came to me, um, that showed me what my purpose in football was. And it wasn't to go and be this illustrious receiver with an amazing career. It was to impact a game that has, is still given to me that you and I are both sitting here talking about right now that we're trying to make better for the kids to come, right? You know, to reach back down and say, hey, look, this is how it's done. This is going to set you up for success as you transition in and as you transition out. So for me, um, wherever I am, I want to be able to continue to impact this game on the field, off the field, um, specifically those transition points, entry points, because um, I think it's the most critical. Uh, quite frankly, it, it can be the difference between uh, somebody being the first in their, their family to go to school and then somebody that is going to be the first to set their family up for generations to come um, in their life after. Uh, so, you know, what that role is, where it is, I don't know. Um, but I know I'm position myself well. Again, I'm, I'll, I'm willing, willing to bet on myself um, you know, if it's right here in Buffalo, in the city that I grew up in, man, amazing, amazing. Um, but if it's if it's not, um, then you know, as long as I'm impacting in some degree, form or fashion, I think I would be okay. And then obviously, there's always other business ventures that, you know, you don't want to. I don't want to pigeonhole myself. Um, there's there's so much opportunity out there, man. And fortunately, you know, there's been there's access that I have leveraged in in, in the network. I think that's one of the things that's a skill set I own. And, Look forward to it, but um, switching gears. You said favorite teammate. You said favorite teammate. No, uh, oh, thank you. Thanks for that tidbit, though. But that was that was that's powerful. Yeah, story. yeah. Um, favorite teammate, man. Throughout my entire man, some guys gonna be mad at me, man. Dang, JK, why you? 
You leave me out there like that. You mentioned Jordan Norwood, yo. Shout out to shout out to Jordan, yo. That, Jordan was a good dude, man. When we when we was in Denver together, you know what I'm saying? He was just one of those dudes who kind of gravitated towards. He had good energy to him. You know, he was always willing to kind of stay after get catches. He was a worker. I, you know, Real that nice. was uh, yeah. yeah, man, yeah, man. Jordan, let me let me wear the ring one time, dog. You know, they cut me that year. They ain't need to do me like that, man. Just <laughs> let me. They went on to get that ring, man. I missed out on that, but. Uh, I would, uh, man, favorite teammate. Let me just think real quick. Let me think real quick about. Favorite teammate and why? Or most influential teammate? Because like, I mm. feel like a lot of times guys have a lot of impacts. Mm. In... We're talking college, bro? Career. Career. Man, that's tough, bro. You've seen how many teams I've been on, bro. That's tough, <laughs> man. Like, I've been all over the place. Impact, impact, impact rises to the top. So yeah, it does. <clears throat> okay. Um, I would I would say, man, that's tough, bro. I don't, there's 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 a couple guys I could say that I very very close with. Um, my brother Aaron Kelly, Clemson University wide receiver. You might maybe you played against, maybe you didn't during your time at Penn State. I'm not sure if you guys ever played down, but um, AK. Me and him, AK had just had a presence about him on the field that I tried to emulate. He was like a stoic, like was never rattled, was never bothered. It was just always just blank. You never knew what he was thinking, what he was doing. Like he was like, are you tired? Are you not? Are you? Like he was just always kind of, um, which I always thought was amazing. Um, that's uh, this all I'm going to do. So I'm not giving you a favorite teammate, but I'm going to give you a couple of different guys that stuck out to me. Pat McAfee in Indianapolis was a guy who I watched authentically be himself regardless of the circumstance, whether it was a team meeting, whether you were at the Pacers game, whether he was who he was to everybody on the roster and, and including the front office staff. And you could see how that paid dividends and, and how that impacted the locker room. Like everybody loved Pat. That's tight. Like it wasn't just like like another Pittsburgh and, guy. And, and by our, the way. Shout out, right? He right. And <laughs> and, and when you think about that, high school, that's what, shout out to Pat. when you when you think about Pat, right? You had another, and then on the other side, you had again another stoic type personality in Andrew, but also it was very fun. And obviously, everybody loved Andrew because he's a quarterback. But like the dynamic and the influence between the both of them at this level that were kind of above everybody, just because of who they were. Um, uh, and then. Um, you know, I think, uh, man, I had I had uh, some teammates in arena football that that are also very close. Uh, that I think um, just from a, a guy that <clears throat> Dave Highland. I'll give Dave Highland a shout out. Dave and I were first teammates in um, uh, Hamilton, and then we were teammates in the uh, Utah Utah Blaze in the AFL, and then we won an arena bowl together in 2015. The San Jose Sabercats. Dave Highland is a guy who was. Uh, you know, a uh, white DB out of Moorhead State that <laughs> I just, didn't know that Yeah, they do, right? And I would <laughs> give Dave is probably one of my favorite teammates because Dave was just a football player, man. Like like and, and he was a and he was one of my one of my Christian brothers off the field and, and to, to see how we kind of met at all these different places, this is one of the things that I would I put Dave up there as one of my favorite teammates. We met at different stages in life a couple different times. And Dave always remained the same person, but always found a way, like, it was almost like he was like an upgraded version every time I seen him after that. Like, you know, I met Dave as a young guy, then I met him when he was married, then I met him after, you know, there were some things that, you know, a lot of different things, but he was always like, dang, this dude, like, always trying, like, always bringing me up, but just a little, little bit, right? So, again, when you talk about football, I think that's one of the things that you value is when you get 53 cats that are willing to go here um, or however many cats you got on the team that are willing to go in one direction, the probability of there being some guys that are, are that you can take something from is pretty high. Um, you just got to be willing to do it. You got to be willing to do it. That's an amazing answer, man. And the fact that you named a different group of guys, because it's, for me, it points out like, what do you value or what do you look to continue to sharpen within yourself. Because when you let, ask guys, like, who's your favorite teammate, especially in football, like, that trust factor comes in because, I mean, there's a level of just respect to play the game at a certain level 
but like what you draw from different guys, that's a very interesting answer to authenticity from Pat Mack and the other guys kind of raising your level up throughout the whole process. Man, this has been this has been a pleasure, man. J JK. Yeah, man. man. I don't really call other people JK, yeah. but JK. No, that's it. Yo, JK I appreciate one, you two, jumping man. on, man. I know, man. No, I appreciate this, man. This is great. And and when you, you know, I mean, we I, you and I are uh, there's so many synergies that we've had this you know we've had this talk over dinner plenty of times man sure. but you know we can we can talk about it for days which is why we get all over but it's um, that's what editing is for you can cut all that stuff out but but no anything. it's it's awesome man I think look if I could leave if I could leave you know uh, this is for young recruits and, and about the blueprint of success you know one of the things that I've always held on to that I utilize as a synonym or an acronym excuse me called, uh, that I refer to as VIP vision intent and purpose and i think you know if i could bundle up everything that we talked about that i that i uh kind of packaged as a, as a young high school athlete that led me to where i am today it was about having my vision that i had at a young age knowing that hey this is what i'm trying to do um, i was intentional about that and that led to my purpose to which i just talked to you about and what my impact is and what i wanted to be in this game so for me that's like you know that's your VIP. What's your VIP? And that for me your is VIP. that's it, man. So um, thanks for naming so the episode. What What's your VIP? You know, like that's you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, or you know, so that's that's just something I, I kind of like try to keep in perspective. Um, but you know, and that changes. That changes. You know, that changes. It doesn't always have to stay the same. That's that's meant to be fluid. So. No, I love it, man. Because like one of my favorite quotes from Nelson Mandela, man, there's no passion to be found playing small and setting for a life that is less than one that you are capable of living. And that comes with the VIP of vision, intention and purpose. Like, because at the end of the day, when you fill up that big square that you're filling in the whole times with the different pixels and a different journey, that's why I said the slow grind is the best grind because you get to really fill in all the different areas. And when you're going through this, uh, pro- through this whole process right starting from high school all the way up until you're leaving and dealing with jeremy at the nfl level at the buffalo bills but like you said have a vision intention and purpose when you're going through this process and understand that there's a great opportunity and a lot of different avenues that open up through for you when you go through the elite sports ecosystem but you have to be primed and ready for them to to take advantage of them, whether it's with a level of confidence, whether it's stepping through doors, putting yourself out there and different things of that nature, because they're not going to come to you, even though you can have successful careers on the field, but to continue to mature and, and, and use these different avenues that the sports ecosystem provides you to be able to make a transition like Jeremy did, even, you know, even like he considered himself as a journeyman, but he's now working in the NFL longer than he did when he was playing. So now he has a career in the NFL and it's not necessarily on the football field, but because he used sports and the things and lessons that he had formulated in the right way to be successful for himself. So that's what we're trying to do for everyone out here, having an acceleration plan as you guys are going through that. And guys get into it. Uh, check out the branding and NIL recruiting era workshop presented by LIG Sports Group. I have a link below, but just going through all the different dynamics that we talked about here and just how to navigate those so you can have a vision and intention and a purpose as you're going through this and having some of the keys and behind the scene details from your boy but again jeremy yes, appreciate you man and appreciate good luck you, the rest of the season with the buffalo bills man i gotta get you a hat i gotta yeah. get you one of these man i gotta get you one you can tell me it's yours hat. you can tell me it was yours yeah <laughs> i, yeah, I was like that's my job right here man <laughs> yeah man shout out look hey the summer 2023 i want to see you out here at the why not you camp that's 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 my that's the name of the camp man why not you uh and that was that was a model that i you know we didn't even touch on that but in high school Somebody had to be great. Somebody had to make it pro. Somebody had to get the scholarship. Why not me? That was that was my mantra. So why not you as the camp now? So with these kids coming up, you know, that's the question you should be asking yourself on a daily. No doubt. Why not you? Ask yourself that throughout your whole career. Like as we talk about, we started in high sure. school, but all this stuff is the transition, man. Transition out of the game, being a desirable asset. Blue Chip Academy is about being a desirable asset throughout the whole ecosystem, not just a top it. recruit. So the point that you're it. saying... Hey, man, why not you? Why not be a president? Why not be a general manager or the different 100%. steps that you take? Why not? Like, exactly. why not? We're going to end on that, man. It, so, man. appreciate it. All right, Off brother. to 2023 in a good, good little good phase right here. So, end it on that note.